Another major business story this week involved Windstream Corporation, which has headquartered its national offices in Little Rock since it was formed in a spinoff from Altel in July 2006. This week, Windstream celebrated its fourth year as a standalone company with an announcement for the capital city. It said it would create 210 new jobs and retain 300 existing jobs in central Arkansas, all while maintaining its corporate headquarters in West Little Rock. Joining us to discuss the non-move is Jeff Gardner. He's the CEO of Little Rock-based Windstream Corporation, which will remain Little Rock-based Windstream Corporation. Jeff, good to have you with us. Thank you, Robbie. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's talk about the headquarter announcement this week. Kind of, what convinced you guys to stay in Arkansas? Well, there are a number of things. Um, we've been very aggressive uh, in terms of acquiring other companies over the last few years, and as a result, we've been uh, we acquired com companies in five different states, and all of these companies that we bought had headquarters. So it was incumbent upon us to look across the country to see what made mo the most sense. We now have uh, customers in 23 states. We eventually decided to make Little Rock our permanent home. Uh, we, we got a great deal of support in terms of uh, a business-friendly environment from the state, which was important. Uh, we've got a great team here, and uh, we've had great success in Little Rock, so we're very pleased that this is where we'll end up. I know you made the announcement that there will be these new jobs to the facility out in West Little Rock. Old jobs are staying put. Tell me what kind of jobs we're talking about. Well, in terms of the corporate headquarters jobs, we talked about 300 jobs staying as a result of our decision to stay here. Those are very high paying jobs. We have our corporate executives here. These are 80,000 plus a year jobs, uh, the 300 that we referenced in our announcement. Going forward, we expect if, to continue to be aggressive acquirer properties. Over the last couple of years, we've added a couple of hundred jobs. And so at the press conference, we announced that we'd add about 210 jobs over the next two years if those trends continue, and we expect them to. And so those jobs will be forty to $50,000 type jobs. And you mentioned Windstream has closed on some substantial acquisitions in the past year, definitely over the course of the company's existence. You and I have visited in the past about some problems uh, in the credit markets and how that's been uh, difficult, particularly in the recessionary period that we're coming out of. Is the credit crunch improving in your uh, estimation? Well, I think it's definitely improving. We raised $400 million this week in about two hours at a very good rate. A testament to the markets, but I think also to the credit strength of our company. In 2009, even at the height of the recession, because we have a solid balance sheet and we've done so well, we were able to acquire companies when others weren't, which also allowed us to get some very good prices. Now, Jeff, you gave testimony before Congress recently about what you describe as a rural-rural divide, not an urban-rural divide, but a rural-rural divide. Explain to me what you're, what you're seeing out there in the market. Well, I think when we went to the Senate uh, two weeks ago, what we tried to help the senators understand that depending on where you live today and whether you're owned, whether you're provided service from a small company, a very small company, or a company like Windstream, which we're considered a mid to large telephone company, there's a huge difference in terms of the support you get from the federal government. So company, our customers that are living in very small cities are getting a huge amount of subsidies that's allowed them to build out fiber, uh, video services to the home. If you live in a market that's owned by Windstream, CenturyTel, Frontier, Quest, in those markets the subsidies are much lower. And so what's actually going on in this country is there's a rule-rule divide. It depends. It shouldn't matter which telephone company provides you service. The economics are the same, and very, basically what we've asked the Congress and the FCC to do is to award universal service funding in order to get to the last 10% of Americans who don't have coverage today based on need rather than the, the residual owner of the property. How do you think your testimony was received? I think it was incredibly well received. Uh, we've got a great team in Washington. I think we were very uh, articulate in trying to under, uh, help the senators understand the issue. We had great facts, uh, and we've got a great track record of providing broadband to rural Americans today. So um, keep our fingers crossed, but I think it was very well received. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Now, finally, you're a world traveler. I know you were recently in South Africa for the World Cup soccer tournament, and I don't think you were scouting out Windstream properties, were you? No, we're, we're still going to stick to our domestic uh, strategy. 
Well, well, tell me how that experience was. And also, I want to ask I, I want, if you know how to play one of those obnoxious horns, uh, the Vuva Vuvuzelas. <laughs> Vuvuzelas. Vuvuzelas. My family is a huge soccer family. I've got three uh, young boys. They all play soccer. We went to the World Cup in 2006. We look forward to it every year. So uh, we did go to South Africa this year. We had a wonderful time. The South Africans did a great job um, hosting the event. Uh, it was great fun, people from all over the world. We attended six matches, um, ate the native food, and just uh, met a lot of the local people. We had a great time. All right, he is Jeff Gardner, CEO of Windstream Corporation. Thank you for being with us, Jeff. My pleasure.